The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician's Hour. My pleasure to be here Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 11 o'clock till noon. And this is Monday. Uh, wait, wait, sorry, Wednesday. God, what a week it's been. Wednesday, February the 7th. There we go. And, uh, of course, on a Wednesday, starts off with Steve Rhodes. Great show, as always. Steve, thank you very much. Then together, Tom and Steve do just a wonderful show. Uh, a little repartee between the two of them, and they look at stocks. They discuss many other things. <clears throat> and then we get 11 o'clock till 12. That's me. And 12 o'clock till noon, you get Larry Pesavanto. And Larry, of course, uh, has traveled again. I believe he's in Hong Kong. I might be mistaken, but I thought that's what he said he'd be doing, moving uh, going to Hong Kong, so we're all over the show. You've gone from Florida to uh, Newton, Mass, and you're going off to Hong Kong, then back, I believe, to Florida with Dave White at 3 o'clock, and, of course, wrap up at 4 o'clock till 6 with Tom O'Brien. So a great day here at TFNN. Go to the front page, check out all the specials going on, Tiger, Tiger Dollars, all sorts of things. For those of you who uh, had signed up a week ago and, and done my um, my webinar on the basics of the Chapman Wave, thank you very much. I'll be following through with some of those questions that I've had um, today. And um, what's really important is that don't absolutely not, you must not feel pressured to, uh, let me put it the other way, Feel free to send me an email with your questions or a chart that you've done if you're able to take a capture a picture and send it to me. There's no pressure on me. I almost always do these things immediately. Sometimes I even in the middle of my trading, it's not a good thing to do, but I'll, I, I just can't help it. I, I answer those questions and I send back it. In fact, what I do is I send back the chart with a chat made with a couple of comments that you might have missed or that you got just great and or you might have missed a peak or something like that. So please do that. And uh, for those of you who are waiting for your, your CDs, um, they, they've been printed. The new printing's just been finished. Uh, as I speak, I believe, and uh, they should be sent out. You'll get them real soon. So, a little housekeeping done there. And uh, most importantly, the Dow is up 44. Now, why did I tell subscribers this morning to expect a bounce? Why? Because in the Chapman Wave, in the Chapman Wave trim gauge, I do no work at all other than to assess certain levels. From that gauge that Richard Arms, an absolutely wonderful technician, developed this. You know, it's a funny thing about Richard Arms. For year, decades, I must say, whenever I've sent an, an epistle, whenever he's sent out something uh, about the, the, his indicators, especially on the Arms Index, I, I, you know, I'm a little embarrassed to say it. It is so often that I totally disagree. And that happens, you know, when you create an index, other people take that index and can use that index to even greater benefit to them. So I take his numbers that he's correlated, and I use them. I have a trend gauge that has, I, I, I'm not even going to go back and check it. The last time I checked them, it's been absolutely fantastically accurate since then. It was about, on my strictest Gauge is not, I mean, the strictest way of measuring is 92% accuracy for the trend gauge in, in predicting that there'll be a market slide the next day. You can get a market slide without it. I'm just saying whenever this hits, you're bound to get it. And if I, I allow just a slight variation, which says that even on a day where it's happened with the Dow was up 350, there was a 250 or almost a 300 point uh, a slide, but it did not go negative. If I had to count that as an accurate measure of the gauge, which says it's going to be a rug pull sometime the next day, which is great because you can start planning your day previous to that on the expectation that there'll be a pullback, that gauge gives uh, that good gauge gives about a 96% accuracy rate. I'm going back two, three years. Now, here's the other thing. 
I have slowly over the uh, 18, last 18 months or so developed it to the other side when it's extremely high. What happens? And that gauge gave a very high reading yesterday, which said, historically, there should be some kind of a bounce. I call it a bounce. It could sometimes be a major turn. I'm only calling it a bounce the very next day. So far, we've got the bounce. We could fail at the end of the day. It's done its job. Thank you, Trin Index. Um, so let's go to this. I had a, a, a couple of questions. I'm going to go right through all the numbers right now. So Dow's up 52 at 12,811. S&P is up 7 at 1350. Remember what I said? I said, as far as I'm concerned... It's going to be two back-to-back triple-digit days that will tell me that we have made a serious market top and that we're looking at time and price and that the 12,500 is probably going to be tackled. So today's action, whether or not we, we, we flip the, late in the day and we close down, unless we close down another, I'd put it between 90 and 125 points at the end of the day, that doesn't meet the criteria that I'm looking at, and it actually corresponds with a lot of that, what I'm looking at. And that is that the MACD and the stock, and I'm going to answer questions as I move along. Um, I, no, I won't. I'm going to finish up. That is the gold is up 14 at 1686. Silver is up 50 cents at 33.25. You see, this kind of fits in as well. Platinum is up 16 at 16.35. High-grade copper is up 3 at 3.76. Now, it took a huge hit. So this is going to be really important looking at the macroeconomic scene, micro and macroeconomic scene. Crude oil is at 105.26, up 50 cents. And we've got bonds down 19.30 seconds at 142 and 27.30 seconds. Give me a break. If something is going on in the bond market that I have to take note of because it is unusual for markets to pull back like they did yesterday and over the period of the last few years. I'm not even talking months. I'm talking about years where bonds have not become the the uh, uh, the protector of money, what we call um, a, a safe haven. So now let's go to what first question. First question was how... We went short at 12,919 on Monday on the Dow. That was a number that I had had for three days saying that if we can get there, I had different ways of looking at it. But on the, on the, on the Friday and the Monday, I said 12,919 sets up a, a chance for a sell signal probably going to a sell mode. And that we wanted to, we wanted to short it via uh, 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 the short indices on the Dow. Well, that worked out fine. I have to call it just a move that has taken the Dow in my 120-minute ch uh, chart from a peak F top from a sell signal to a sell mode. The Dow will go to a sell mode if we close even one penny below yesterday's low of 12,734.86. If we have this inside bar, which means a higher high than yesterday and probably a much lower high than yesterday. So a higher low and a lower high makes an inside bar. But most importantly, how, if, when, where that nine period exponential moving average, which was broken yesterday on a close, at 12,000, is that exact 12,000? Yep, at 12,000 and, and 12,900, that is going to be key. Because if in the next three to five sessions there's a rally towards that, then the pattern that I set up, for, that I showed my subscribers this morning, and every single day I showed this with commentary and then commentary under the commentary to show that there was a cup formation. And that cup formation says that if a cup formation that might form. And if that cup formation says that the Dow is able to rally back towards the 12,900, it's actually 12,890 12, uh, 12, area, and close there, that will say there's the chance that we could make another cup formation. And then a little later on, in a few more days, we could start down again because I'm seeing right now that the upside to break 13,055 on the Dow is going to be really tough, really tough. And, of course, we did give back 27 days or something of trading, uh, of trading days. It's over a month 
in one fell swoop yesterday. The 12,712 level was the previous cluster pattern. You remember I was talking about the clusters yesterday, how the market had closed uh, just a series of dojis that said, hey, I, I'm, I'm like a, a barbed wire fence. To break, to break me, you're going to have to leap or you're going to do the Superman trick and leap over this. So <laughs> until that can happen, I'm not sure that we're going to do very much other than consolidate here, which is really important. Now, what's important to me is that there's a, there's a, a test of the 12,743 level yesterday by breaking just a, a, nine points or something underneath, then a bounce back. So in the 120-minute chart, the 12,707 is the 200 period exponential moving average, which is going to be really critical. So you've got two levels, 12,712 from the Dow chart, daily chart with all those dojis, back on the left side, back in late January, early February. And then what you've got is uh, the uh, the uh, 200 period exponential moving average. Now the VIX made a peak D. That was another reason I didn't even mention it today. I did in my in my overview. But the VIX made a 200. Made, sorry, it made a left side right side time price match with the the Dow's move from um, the 10th of February, where it started the rally. That was the top of 21.98 in the VIX 120 minute chart. Pull back, and now you've got a failure to break above 21.98 yesterday in a way that's a positive. So the day is young at that point, it is. Now, if you're looking at the, the, quint, the quintile that I've set up here with the five different charts on one page, on one, in one window, you will see that we finally broke the uptrend, the up channel support in the down the S&P. Hey, that's a negative. Former support becomes resistance. Former resistance becomes support. So, now we're done with that. I just want to continue with one thing. And the, Oh, sorry. The question was, how did I go from a sell signal to a sell mode? Well, it, I should technically call it a sell mode because the MACD and stochastic are so, were so negative and actually are still very negative. It's going to take a little while in time for that to move, maybe a couple of days. That's the reason why I'm saying that nine period exponential moving average would need to be hit before we could actually get a turnaround. So the sell mode would confirm if we close lower today by one penny than yesterday. Meantime, I'm calling it sell signal and if even today, if there's a, if the Dow stalls, closes maybe only 34, five points higher rather than 75 to 85 points, I'll probably go to the sell mode because we're going to use up time, maybe not price, but at least time. That's that I covered. There was a question on TIE, T-I-E, and I'll get to that in the den. Also, we've got Jack and Dan waiting in the way. Jack, hi, Jack, how are you? What would you like to look at so that I can look at it during the break? Hey, how are you, Basil? Very well, thank you. Good. Um, you know why I'm, why I'm calling, Basil? Oh, you want that same uh, the SNDXF um, Sandstorm uh, Gold? Yes, sir. Great. Okay. You remember I said there was a possible peak F? So yeah, we'll talk did. about you that. You called it right on the money, man. Thank you very much. I'll be you back are, with you. You are, uh, you are golden with those predict predictions. <laughs> Thank now, you very I have much. A question for you. Great. I'll it's be back with you. To get, to get oh, let's go to the break and I'll be right back, Jack. Jack, Dan, and Ty from our, our questioner in the den. Sure you You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you seek to maximize your returns. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN is proud to bring you the cutting edge of investment newsletters. Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. 
Ken is a top-down investor who lets price and volume in the major stock indices tell him when to be in the market and when to be out. By using his unique blend of fundamental and technical analysis, Ken will protect your hard-earned capital while realizing breakouts gains. Go to TFNN.com today, click Investment Newsletters, and get Ken Shree's Ultimate Growth Stocks free for two weeks. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN.com, author of Mastering Probabilities, a daily investment and trading newsletter, and teacher of the money game. Studies show that three out of five people are afraid for their life in trading these markets, and the number one reason given is fear of loss. Look. Fear stands for false evidence appearing real, and the money game proves it. Lesson number one, don't risk more than 1% of your trading capital on any trade. Why, you ask? Because 35 trades in a row where you risk 50 cents and make a dollar are all you need to double your trading capital versus the 230 losing trades in a row you would need to bring your balance to $100. Let me teach you more about the money game risk-free for 30 days. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, for your 30-day risk-free trial. You are born to be a money master, and I'll teach you how. X-Story Gold Mines, an NYSE Amex-listed company trading under the symbol XG, is slated to be the newest gold-silver producer in Argentina. X-Story is forecast to produce more than $250 million in bullion annually, beginning in 2013, at a cash cost of less than $200 for each ounce of gold produced. That forecast will make X-Story one of the highest margin operators in South America and a sector leader in the mining industry. X-Story has $50 million in its treasury, having spent over $60 million to date on drilling and engineering. The ultimate size of its Argentina discovery could be determined by year-end as results from the six drills operating at the site are fully assessed. To find out more about X-Story Gold Mines and their exciting growth potential, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex under the symbol XG. Here's what people are saying about Tiger TV. Let's go to John in Tampa. Hey, John, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. You having a good day out there? A wonderful day. I love your Tiger TV. I watch it every day. I'm like a kid in a candy store. Oh, man, I appreciate you out there watching it. How long have you been watching the Tiger TV? I watch it almost a month now, and it's just it's wonderful. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's cool. You see the charts and everything. Thanks so much for the hard work. Tiger TV, a great news service from TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. This is the Tiger Technician's Hour, 877-927-6648. And SNDXF was the question, and the questioner is Jack from Colorado. So now this is what I wanted to talk to you about, Jack. There was a sudden spike to um, 1.9555. Now, folks listening at home, this is not a stock for you because it is what we call a pink sheet stock. In other words, it's got four digits. It goes, it's at 1.7100. It's up 0 0.0520. You got to figure out what that means because it's not your normal stock. Uh, and what happens is you can you can get into these stocks sometimes very easily. It's getting out that's really difficult. You have to get out on a big move up, and you actually have to have the price in. It's very difficult sometimes. So I don't advise this type of stock for anyone who's not been uh, trading basically pink slip stocks before who doesn't understand. But that move that was that spike on the 1st of March, I put in the category of a rogue wave. Now let me explain what this is. In my CD introducing the Chapman Wave methodology, how many slides there? This is slide 269 of 476 slides. It says rogue wave analogy and I've got a nice colorful background because this is a really important thing. The sign at the beach says high tide at noon. At 12.08 p.m. you are sitting at the water's edge reading a book and relaxing when, ka-splash, suddenly you're soaked and wondering what happened. Well, the tide might have turned, but that wave didn't read the sign, and that's basically what happened here. The tide had turned, I think we're talking about that, that in fact, 
the stochastic, the, the stochastic was starting to decline. The MACD had just a little M-shaped pattern to complete. So it got that sudden spike, and before you know it, you are way below. In other words, the high was 1.9555. And what was the low yesterday? 1.4830. That is a big percentage move. I don't have to tell you that, right? That's correct. Matt. Now, I've got a guess. I'm just guessing that you nibbled yesterday on the decline. Uh, just a little bit, but I was afraid to commit very much. Okay, I love the fact that you nibbled and you weren't you were afraid to commit very much. I'll explain why. I'm going to use this as an example next time I discuss it with in a, one of my master trader series as a very difficult stock to get a buy signal on because you could actually have the buy signal, but it comes from a much shorter time frame. So what happens is the 120-minute chart made a fabulous move down almost to the 200-period moving average. The stochastic and the MACD, for anyone looking at the Tiger TV, you'll see the lower thing here, the yellow and red line, that's stochastic. The next one is the MACD, and you can see these little vertical lines. It's the MACD histogram. That is the result of the, of, of the computing of the 26-period moving average and the 9-period, and then they make a, uh, of the 12-period, and then they make a uh, histogram of the 9-period differential, it's called. And that's starting to improve. So... A nibble, I think, is very good, and I'm going to even say to you, you might have to give up a little bit of, the, of, of potential gains. Why? Because of the severity of the move down, there's a candle that I call the Roman candle, and that's the candle that was formed at 11.30 on the 120-minute chart and on the daily chart yesterday. What it says is that you open at a certain price, you try to move higher, but it only goes up fractionally, and then you plunge, but I really mean plunge, and then you come all the way back and you close halfway or a little above halfway, and that creates a candle that I call the Chapman Wave Roman Candle. The implication is that if any point in the next few days it goes even halfway into the wick, which would be at about one point, if it breaks 1.594, You've got to be real careful because it's probably going to go down to the lower part. Now, the positive side says that if it was to break above yesterday's high of 1.7580, that's very positive because it could start to tackle the next candle. Here's my recommendation. Small position you've got. If it breaks, if it even closes at the high today, but I would prefer to say if it can go to 7, 1.7590, Add just a tiny other position. It's almost like an experiment in this particular exercise. Why? Because okay. if you're successful, you'll really make some nice money. So even though you've got a very small amount in it, it's going to be good. My eye says there's a rectangle formation forming and that it's going to trade between probably about only one point, maximum of 1.7715. And it's probably going to get close to getting into that wick towards the one point. Uh, five eight level. So right now, trading band, the Basil? level that you is got is good. Basil. Yes. Could I ask you one thing real quick? Absolutely. Do you see that that huge bar toward the end of uh, of um, I guess it's January, about January twenty third or so? Uh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. You don't think we could go back and re and retest that high Abs on that bar? If you break below the halfway point of that wick, you will test the low, and then you will def. That would be the target, yes. Okay. So th right. those are the parameters. Thanks so much for calling, Jack. Hey, we'll thanks. be back with Dan and North Reading straight after this. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. If you want to get great trade setups and equity as well as the option market, come over to TFNN.com and test drive my daily newsletter, Market Insights, for two weeks absolutely free. Each trade setup comes with a profit projection as well as stock placement. Included in Market Insights is a Twitter alert service. This allows you to take advantage of intraday setups. Volatility is back in the markets. What does that mean to you? To me, it spells short-term opportunity each and every day. The days of trending up on lighter volume are gone. We have come off the highs with volume across the globe. Don't get caught in a complacency trap. Many of the indices have given back two months of trading in one week. We have a trader's market. You can take advantage of this trader's market by test driving my daily newsletter, Market Insights, free for two weeks. Market Insights will give you the edge you're looking for in the markets. Go to TFNN.com under Newsletter. Hit the Market Insight tab for your two-week free test drive right here, right now. 
In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. In the world of financial markets, there's a new player in town with an exciting new way to trade the markets. Nadex now offers binary options as well as bull spreads in a wide range of indices along with commodity and forex markets. With as little as $100, you can gain access to a new way to trade global financial markets while guaranteeing that your risk will always be capped. Nadex allows you to multiply your trading opportunities in ways never imagined before and access markets you once thought were out of reach. With short-term trading opportunities available, including binary options expiring each hour the market is open, Nadex allows you to take advantage of a variety of market conditions regardless of volatility or market direction. Now is the time to take advantage of this exciting new market. Don't let this trading opportunity pass you by. Open your account today by clicking on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Nadex, a better way to trade. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Health Insure Your Portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportion of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney believes that a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what asset allocation location and the Morgan Stanley Smith Barney financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and certified financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC. Member SIPC. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician's Hour. And my pleasure to go right to Dan in North Reading, waiting patiently. Hi, Dan. I'm finally with you. Sorry for you to wait. Oh, no problem. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you. Good. Well, I was wondering if you could look at this FXI for me. This has kind of been a horrible trade of mine that I purchased about a year ago oh. on a high basis and I kind of rode it all the way down and just wondering if I should get out now or if it's going to go back down to 28 or hold on. Okay, let's talk about that. Folks, we're looking at the FXI and the FXI is the iShares, the FTSE China 25 index. Um, used to call it the Xinhua, I think it was. Yeah, iShares Xinhua China 25. They changed the name because nobody could pronounce it, not even me. Although I did have someone from China, a young, a young guy who sent me an email saying, thank you, I love listening to the shows, and this is the way you pronounce it, and I believe it was Xinhua. So iShares FTSE China 25 index is right now at 37.99, up 24 cents. It made a peak F top in the monthly chart at 72.26 it started off, the IPO started off in 2004 at about $17.90. No, $16.52 was a lot. So it made a fantastic move up to $17.26, and then it plunged. It plunged down to 19.35, a 73% uh, decline. Now it's gone peak A, peak B, peak C. So when it went to, you're talking about... On yeah, the, basically, uh, after the peak C monthly... I got into it, I, I think it was about April, kind of oh, okay. going, going on the uh, assumption that it was going to go to a leg D in the monthly. 
and then it kind of topped out. I think it was about forty six or forty seven. Oh, okay, all right. So you, high. so you, so you got real close the other day. Now, this is the one thing that you've always got to be careful of. You know how I talk about in a Chapman wave when you come down really sharply, and then you have the bounce. You got to be thinking dreaded H, especially when you come down sharply. So what happens is that in the in the Chapman wave, very often at A or B, we'll see we've seen that in many monthly charts, that at B it starts to pull back even C. Now, you would have been correct because I also thought after that doji in April at forty six forty that all it needed was I mean a dollar and a half or something, right, to make that leg D. But this is the most important thing is that the, if you look at the stochastic in the, in the monthly, you'll see that it was much weaker than it was at the high of 46.66 at peak B. That is something that is a heads up. And you'll also see that the MACD deflected lower. So in this particular instance, two things, is, two things I've got to emphasize. One is that if you... You probably had thought about a stop, and then once it moved too quick, you said, oh, no, it's going to come back. I'm going to hang on, right? Yeah, I mean, I it it kept going down after uh, August was, 8th, you know, much more severely than the market did. So that threw me for a loop a little bit. But Okay. Now, here's the other thing. In the weekly chart, it went to, in November of 2010, went to 47.99, then it made that cup formation, that's the formation that I'm talking about, is a possibility here, and then it's going to be the move after the cup, where everybody says, oh, big mistake, forget about shorting, that was horrible, because we're now going to break out to, to, to the 14,000 level on the Dow, that's where you've got to be most careful. That right shoulder failure pattern, my, my CD introducing the Chapman Wave methodology, I have a whole chapter somewhere around here on the right shoulder failure. Right shoulder, that's chapter 21. Chapter 21, and that right shoulder failure is really important because it tells you a whole bunch of things that you can look for. And, in fact, if you start using the, my webinar technique where I talk about the moving averages and the MACD and the stochastic and how they, they can help you, you'll see that the stochastic in the move back up in going to 4640, uh, the week of April the 22nd, had fading MACD and fading stochastic. Now what we've done is we've made the, the pattern I call the, the falling X, that descending, expanding triangle. And we've gone to a peak E. So we can expect a little bit more of a pullback with the stochastics holding at 88%. The, the fast-moving average has actually come down very quickly, but that slow-moving average is holding. So this is, a, this is, I mean, like the market itself, the, the, the Dow and the S&P and the NYA, this is a pretty critical moment because if we were at the end of the day to really plunge to that triple digit down day, that FXI will almost certainly be coming down very seriously. That's number one. Number two is that if we can hold and that FXI, which made a peak D top like another double top, if the stochastics is almost at 28%, it's almost at a point where it's going to start to flatten out. So the gap in the FXI, and of course we get many gaps because it's an overseas uh, traded uh, ETF, I mean it's traded here but it comes from overseas uh, uh, movement, that 37.44 level on the 17th of January is going to be pretty uh, critical and it's at 37.98 so you are down now the question that you have to ask and I have to ask is and this is really your question is this going to make that I wouldn't say requisite in this particular instance because it's a monthly chart, it can do anything it wants but what we would like to see is it going to make a bounce that takes you to at least test the Roman candle of June of last year, which is 45.13 high, 40.35. I'm sure that after this kind of move, you'll be real pleased to get out if you have to at 45, right? Correct. <laughs> and, if it, and, and if it goes to 45 and you raise your stop and it keeps going higher, that'll be even better. So this is what I'm going to ask you to do. Regardless of whatever I say or anybody thinks, you need to put, at this point, you need to put in some kind of a stop on some part of your position. You, right. you just have to do it. You can always get back in. Let's go, you watch the market. I'm sure you've done well enough over the years to know that you can make money up. But to make a lot is really tough. Right. So, right. 
So be very disciplined, and I can tell just from your voice that it, it really it was a, a worry that it came down that sharply. If you had such a portfolio that it came down and you said, you know what, eh, I can wait, that's different. It sounds to me like this is important that it really gets back so that you do not lose that much. So here's what yeah. I'm looking at. The big gap from yesterday, you want to see it climb over 38.37. That's the, nine, the 200 period exponential moving average, and it has to do it today's Wednesday, by Monday, and it has to also do it without getting in underneath 37.44. So I'm going to recommend that at least some part of your money has a stop that says at 37.43, even if the very next day it gaps up and goes to 80. It doesn't matter. The discipline is you must this time protect your money. The next thing is that I have a rule. I do it myself. I've been very disciplined in doing it. If I expected something to happen and it doesn't happen, and then by luck or whatever, I'm suddenly breaking even and even making a little money, I either get completely out of it and say, Phew, and then I rethink the position. I could put the very same trade back on, but I'm now fresh. I'm thinking differently. So when it gets even close, I'm going to recommend you tighten up your stop really a lot. And even if you take a little bit of a loss, and even if it goes much higher, say to yourself, Phew, I don't want to go through that again. That is a lesson I learned. Next time I'm going to be very strict with my stops. So right, I hope that right. helps you. So those yeah, are parameters. One, one last yeah. question on that too, yes. Basil. I noticed last summer on the weekly that it went to a peak D, you know, before it started heading down. Yes. And this time it seemed to get to an E a lot faster and it was kind of, you know, chopped around at the end here, whereas last summer was kind of this extended leg. Beat. Right. I, I'm looking at this as so far as potential strength. That's why I'm saying to you that my, I would still put in a stop, but those are the parameters that gapped down yesterday. was really ugly. But it is the FXI. It's the, uh, it, you know, it, it, that's the, the way this thing has a habit of trading. Now, the very right. important right. thing for you is let's see if by Wednesday – Hopefully there isn't a turn down by the end of the day because that's what you can expect. By the end of the day, we give up quite a bit. If we're in this in this in this sell mode that's coming up, if 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 that's the way it's going to work. But if not, we can go into rectangle formation and you can make decisions between 39, 21, and 41 to get out of something. To say that okay, whew, at least some of it I've re I've saved, and now let's see what happens. But I'm going to ask you to do something else. Call me Wednesday. Let's look at this together because I happen to think the FXI is really important for us right at this particular point to really take a, to get a good grip on. You mean so, next Wednesday or this Friday? coming? Uh, I'm sorry, on Friday. On Friday. Okay. All okay. Right. All right, <laughs> thank, thank you very much. My, my engineer just reminded me it's Wednesday. I, I, I'm, I'm mixed up with my days. Thank you very much for calling. Let's go to Mark in Mass. Hi, Mark. How are you? Hi, good. How are you? Very well. Thank you. I wanted to look at the, um, the financials, the XLF. Uh, the financials had a terrible day yesterday. Of course, the whole market was a terrible day yesterday. But Correct. Particularly the XLF. And I'm also just a little bit confused about where do you think we'll go over the next day or two? And correct me if I'm wrong. If I if I understand you correctly, you think the uh, if we go up a hundred or or two hundred points like we did yesterday, we're going to go higher. But if we're going to stay at this uh, level, okay. right? Let, let me talk to the, let me talk about the two. Those are very good issues. Let's talk to them both at the same time. We're looking at the XLF, which is made in the weekly chart, a, a leg C and a potential peak C to this week if there's no by Friday if we do not go above $14.97. If you go to $14.98, that extends leg C, and that's very positive. The MACD and the stochastic in the weekly chart, this is the reason why I was saying I'm going to only call this, even on, on Monday when I was talking about the potential for a pullback, I said I'm only talking about it as a pullback, a consolidation, because my weekly charts, they can change because the daily charts get smashed badly. But at that point, I said my weekly charts are absolutely critical, and let's see how they close out on Friday. That's this coming Friday. So, so far, the XLF has had fabulous action in the weekly chart, even with yesterday's move, because it went right to the 9 period exponential moving average at 14, I think that is 14, uh, 14.39. It went down to 14.40. And it bounced. 
the day the, the week isn't even half over yet but that's good so now let's look at the monthly chart is in a, a retracement rally this is new leg a up now for those of you who took my webinar last wednesday remember this the bar in the xlf of october that cannot be a high bar it's a low bar but it cannot also be a high bar you have to get a trough before you can start the wave counts and this is new leg a but the moment if it ever goes above 1720 it, let's just say it does it in this leg, that becomes E slash A. I immediately reactivate that 1720 to say that's the old buy mode rather than to be too anticipatory to say, oh, brand new move, leg A, this is fantastic. I like to be very conservative. So it'll go to the old wave count. Now the, now the, the daily chart went to a peak F. I'm calling it a peak F on, uh, at 1497 on the 1st of, of March because of the severity of the decline, but it still did not break the low of the 16th of February. So that's the number to be watching. So now let me put the whole package together. The, what I'm looking at is, I believe there's a good chance that the XLF will consolidate. At worst, it could go down to the 200 period exponential moving average at 1394, which would be close to the 13, or it would be above the 1388 low of the 30th of January. That's the way I'm looking at it now. I can change my mind because the MACD and stochastic are really poor. But if the MACD and stochastic consolidate, basically they consolidating without the price, if they turn up, then you can expect that the price of the XLF, the financial, the S&P Select Financial Spider Fund, will benefit and we'll see if it's able to close above the nine period exponential moving average of $14.71, somewhere around there. I'm not sure it's being covered right now, but it's around about that level. So that's that. Now, what's interesting, let's put it together with INDU, with the Dow. The Dow, if you look at, oh, it's a little bit messy. Let me just go to the clean. No, I'm going to have to use this. I need to use the MACD and stochastic. There is no sign in the MACD and the stochastic as of now to say we're turning the corner to the upside. Now, the price can do it, but then the technicals have to follow. At this point, the technicals, if they stay like this, are going to become a drag if the Dow is not able to break above yesterday's high of 12,958.73. I'll do the same thing with the SPX because these, these markets are very similar. The S&P is up eight. So what I'm looking at now is the potential. If there's a strong move up into the close, it has to be into the close today of a rectangle formation, maybe one quick dip below, but basically we're consolidating sideways. But it's really negative if the S&P and the Dow close just under yesterday's low, especially by the end of the day or early tomorrow, it goes underneath. And the XLF then will have, and you can see, so what I'm saying is I'm in a sell signal. Potential sell mode, I really should have given it a sell mode based on the technicals, but if the, if the price doesn't do it, I have to go with the price. So I'm, I'm being as clear as I can. You move on, on the XLF above Fourteen dollars and that's the seventy two cents. That's very positive action, and I suspect we're in a sideways move in the XLF. You break under yesterday's low, then the first the first level of support is the fifty period moving average at about fourteen twenty two, breaks that, and you're going to go for the two hundred period exponential moving average at thirteen ninety four. So that's the way I'm setting up right now. I'm also saying to you at this particular point, because of all the peak E's and F's, etc., that the upside is probably very limited, at least for the next week, week, week and a half. Okay, Hope great. Hope that helps you. Yep, thank you. Have a good day. Thank, you too. Thank you, Mark. We'll be back, and I'll be answering the question on copper and TIE that was asked in the deck. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. At Tiger Metal Exchange, we pay you more for converting your jewelry to cash. Let's go to uh, Brian in New Jersey. Hey, Brian, what's going on? Hey, Tom, I uh, just want to let you know I did uh, give you some jewelry. Uh, my jeweler offered me uh, about $650. but you get a check in the mail tomorrow for about 1200 At Tiger Metal Exchange, it's all about honesty when converting your jewelry to cash. Okay, let's go to Paul in Florida first. Hey, Paul, what's going on? I want to commend you on the Tiger Metal Exchange. I just did a deal with you guys the other day. 
Oh, good. I'm very happy. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Now, yeah. did you sell us jewelry or did you buy coins off us? Yeah, I sold you jewelry. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. See, what we weighed of that was less than you guys said, so, you know, you're totally honest. At Tiger Metal Exchange, we give you the tools to value your gold, and it's absolutely free. Call 866-618-8888 or log on to TigerMetalExchange.com. We've created the easiest, safest, and most honest cash for gold process. Tiger Metal Exchange. It's the only call you need to make. Put the power of the Chapman Wave methodology to work for you. No matter what market you trade, what time frame you trade in, or your trading style, the opening call, Basil Chapman's daily market newsletter, is bursting with the information and trades you need to become a more successful trader. I've been using Basil Chapman's Chapman Wave methodology for several years now. His Chapman Wave can be used for any time period for not only equities, but futures, currencies, commodities. I've been also a subscriber of his opening call, which I find an invaluable tool to help me analyze the potential of the market each day. He gives you opportunities to go short and long. It includes recommendations on stocks. I strongly recommend people using the Chapman Wave and very, very strongly support the use of his opening call. To find out more about Basil Chapman and his Chapman Wave methodology, and to get your two-week free trial of the opening call, a $64 value, visit TFNN.com today. Would you like to discover the next great tech stock? David White, TFNN's technology guru, has just launched his new newsletter, The Technology Insider. In his newsletter, David will be looking for those shining stars that may turn into the next Apple, Microsoft, or Cisco. David combines his technology background as a software programmer with his market skills as a successful professional trader to give you this unique newsletter. We're on the verge of the next great tech run. With the Technology Insider, you'll be in front of the run-up and not lagging behind. David is developing a long-term investment portfolio. Therefore, we're only offering the Technology Insider as an annual subscription with a remarkable price of only $395. That's right. For a little over $1 a day, you'll receive the fundamental technology wisdom and technical trading skills of the Technology Insider, David White. What are you waiting for? Go to the front of TFNN.com, click on the link on the front page, sign up for your two-week free trial, and become a Technology Insider today. Great Basin Gold is a mining company engaged in the exploration and development of two emerging gold properties in Nevada and South Africa with a total resource base of more than 23 million gold ounces. Great Basin Burnstone Mine in South Africa opened in February of this year with a resource of 20 million gold ounces, becoming the first mine to open in the historic Whitwaters Rand Basin in the last 30 years. The Burnstone Mine is projected to have a 25-year mine life and is fully financed with production anticipated to be over 250,000 thousand ounces per year at a cash cost of only four hundred and fifty dollars per ounce the hollister mine in nevada became fully integrated in the fourth quarter of 2010 with annual production estimates of 110,000 ounces of gold per year over the eight-year mine life at a cash cost of only 527 dollars per ounce great basin gold is cash flow positive and trades on the toronto and new york stock exchanges under the symbol gbg Catch Larry Pesavento, a 40-year veteran trader. He uses pattern recognition, Gartley's, Butterflies, ABC's, and Fibonacci in order to trade these markets. Trade what you see next on TFNN. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. Okay, in the remaining remain minutes, I had a couple of questions. Let's first go to TIE, which came up uh, in the den as a question. Uh, TIE is uh, titanium metals, one of the very few stocks that made a peak C- minus in the Chapman Wave monthly chart. Uh, but that, of course, can happen. Uh, I shouldn't say one of the few. I thought that was a major top. No, that was in a re, re in a in a retracement rally. It can fail. See, it did make the PD huge candle on the in May of 2006 at 4763, plunged down to four dollars and four cents in March of 2009. The 200 period moving average is at 11.95. That to me is kind of a benchmark. That's what I'd be I'd be expecting if two things happen. One is in the weekly chart, this is this pattern. It's actually an in, I can't do this. I wish I could. I can do it if I, I save and paste it, but I can't do it right here. If I could turn the staple on its side, you would see that there's really a staple in the dreaded H pattern from the low of 1328 on the August the 12th to the high of peak D, a quick peak D, and I used a phantom peak here, so quick, quick peak D in October uh, 
um, 2011 at 1795. Then it plummeted down. And then bounced again. So it's made essentially the left side shoulder, the head, and the right side shoulder. Where's Rick from British Columbia? All right. So now this is the issue. That's the weekly chart. So it's really very critical on a closing basis that it closes above the, the twice hit 13.28 uh, level of uh, week of August the 12th and the 19th. Now, if it closes underneath that, what we're looking at is in the daily chart, there's a left side, right side price time match from also 13.52 to the high of um, 28th of October at 17.95, pulls back, goes to peak C minus, fails, has a, a higher high, starts a brand new buy mode with that plus sign, and that goes to a peak E doji on the, at 16.53 on the 19th of January. Look what happens. It comes down, makes the dreaded H failure, makes it at peak A minus on the 200 period moving average. Rallies goes to B, then a B minus because it breaks underneath it. Now it's in leg F to the downside. That says at that point, you could have that right arm extension upside down. And this is where you could expect a potential bounce. And I say a potential bounce. But why? Because... The weight of evidence says that the stochastic is flattening out at 10%. That's like when I look at, talk about the Dow being at 80, at 90%, that it could still go to 95. This could still go to single digits. So it's on the positive side, if it can hold steady above 90%, very positive. And on the downside, you've got to be careful here. But the MACD is still very wide. It isn't showing any sign of turning around. Now, the... the um, 120-minute charts is great. Got a potential for a little bit of a bounce. So the question is, what what to do? My answer is, if you actually nibbled it, if you are already in it, I'm not sure if that was a question. I would say, great. It's very easy. Make your stop one penny below the 13.35 low. It's 26 cents. So at 13.34, you're out. Even if it goes under and closes above it, you just don't want the chance that it's going to start making another move to the downside. On the upside, if it gets above 13.66, the nine period moving average, that's great. Raise the stop to break even. And if it gets to 13.60, give yourself a little bit of a profit and raise the stop. And, it's, and all of this is only a small position. Why? Because you've had such a concerted down move that the momentum says, even if it was to rally, there's a chance it could try to retest. Now, let's go to the HGH. I'm going to the March. I think the March contract is still viable. The copper. This is really important because that pattern I talk about, the dreaded H, or even if you want to call it this like a little bit of a head and shoulders, I want to see that copper goes back above the 200 period moving average of 3.77. It needs to break above it and it's got to tackle 3.82. That is really important. The weekly chart is still very strong, but if it breaks underneath, if copper breaks underneath 3.63 in the next three days, be careful. So my sights are that the Dow has to hold 12th. It cannot go below yesterday's low. If it closes below that, we can go lower even if we're going to bounce. But if we close up 90 to 110 points, we're looking at a rectangle pattern possibly forming. Stay tuned to Larry. I'm sure he's going to have a tremendous amount to discuss. And I'll be back. I'll be back on Friday morning. Thanks for being here. Are you